This is episode 16 of the Podcraft Beer Show for November 2nd, 2020, part two of our interview with co-founders Jeff and Mike of Burning Beard Brewery in El Cajon, California. Welcome to the Podcraft Beer Show for November 2nd, 2020. This is episode 16. I am Tech Guy Steve with today's intro for the host, Chris and Charlie. This is part two of our first on-site interview with Jeff and Mike, the co-founders of Burning Beard Brewery in El Cajon, California. I hope you enjoyed part one. It was a lot of fun to put together. There was one correction I have to make, though. I mentioned that our second beer was In Praise of Bacchus. But that was wrong. That was our planned beer, but Jeff wanted us to try in praise of pear, so that was our second beer we had. It was very delicious. Highly recommend it. Part two includes reviews of the following three craft beers from Burning Beard Banksy ESB on Nitro, New Damage, and Circle of Hops. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, then head over to thepodcraft.com. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. So without any more delay, please enjoy part two recorded on site with social distancing at Burning Beard Brewery in El Cajon, California. I'm going to chug this beer so I can make some room in my glass. I'm going to fill it dirty because that's how I roll. It's (laughs) It's it's such a dry finish. Super dry, like it's a great caramel roasty mm. caramel taste. Yeah, you know that's that's one of those perceived We're going dryness home with because some of these it in cans. That's a that's the greatest thing you've done is put this in cans. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't believe how many delinquents asked for this beer to be in cans. So can or maybe like you, you would just blatant government warning on the front. That's a great <laughs> can label. It's COVID silver lining, man. Ah. Yeah. Excellent. Canning. So you guys had started canning like shortly before COVID. Is that right? Like I don't like, know. Um, I don't know what the timeline was, yeah. but we it was not small a, runs. It was very small runs. More yeah. like, hey, it would be cool to do this once, and and we did it. Yeah. But when COVID hit, it was literally a stroke of luck. It looks like it was planning genius, but it was not. We had our anniversary was coming up for, which was epic. Epic. Did you I, did, I was oh, out of town oh, on a work. Uh, that right. was my final work meeting. Wow, was that that weekend. You will not get that day back. No, was... well, and that's one thing you don't want to miss. <laughs> like we got to we got to like touch on that here in a minute as well as your guys' parties and yeah. how like that's probably um, well we got we got a few months until till yours comes uh, you know till the the anniversary but um, unbelievable times. Yeah, uh, that's a party. It was it was the four was amazing, um, and we had. We were sliding into this trajectory. We're hoping for this, in my mind, this exponential growth of of what we're doing. So literally the day before COVID hit, it was leap year day. Uh, we may have caused it. We had we had visitors from Belgium who had recent, recently been to Japan. Oh, good. And uh, yeah, I, I blame us, really. So... <laughs> Headlines Patient tomorrow. zero. <laughs> the, and, uh, yeah, where, where was I? Man? So the party, you don't want to miss the party. I was going to talk about Doc the, Yeah, we were talking about just ramping up to it. And oh, how we're we, ramping uh, up the canning. So the party, the party's happening, right? And we, we always try to do a bottle release or a can release or something or a couple things for, for the people that are at the, the party. And we knew that we were going to have this, the store. We'd predicted, we'd hoped that the stores would be de- depleted after the party. And we had a double canning run of dankness visible mm. right after the, right after the party and Normcore. And so COVID hits and we just lucked into having these two canning dates lined up. We're shut down. Everybody's to go. And those beers like literally carried us through the early times. It was really uh, a, we lucked upon that, but having that and then having COVID hit, we were able to schedule another canning run and we've really just kept in the loop. 
And uh, we, we, I don't think we plan to stop because people it, like cans. We like yeah, cans. It's, yeah, it's, it's a great vessel, right? Yeah, but like I was saying before, you know, when COVID happened, a lot of the draft distribution around town basically went stopped, stopped uh, flatlined, and then that's when a lot of these smaller liquor stores and craft oriented grocery stores decided to pick up some of the slack from a lot of the brewers who had inventory ready to go and, you know, ingredients ready to go. And so that's where we kind of got a nice little breakthrough into the, into the, you know, retail market. We distributed it all by ourselves, but you know, it's still, it's, it's nice to be able to bring beer to the communities that aren't necessarily able to get here. Or they don't come out here as much because, you know, for whatever reason. So it's, that's been a, it's, that's, you know, if you're looking for a, a silver lining, of the the COVID shutdown, uh, this kind of actually helped us get our foot in the door with with that too. So it's kind of cool. You guys Small. positioned yourself well, accidentally. Accidentally, I mean, sometimes things happen that are good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, mean, that's that's the story of our our business partnership. All all of my life, probably none of Mike's. <laughs> it's all an accident. <laughs> <laughs> stumbling, stumbling upon good luck. I'm a big fan of stumbling behind good yeah. luck. Yeah, it, it just so it. happens the way I like to run my life. <laughs> stumbling into good luck. I like it a lot. ESB. Cheers. No, that's a, that's an amazing beer. Yeah, it's it's really uh, evolved into um, a staple here, as you, you mentioned, and uh, it's. We're tweaking things constantly, trying to dial things in and get them to where we never have to touch them. This is one of the one of the beers that we're like, it's done. Do have not, you, do have you guys tried it on nitro yet? I, is it on nitro? Oh, right it's, yeah. yeah it'll, I was. It'll change your life. Yeah, so no, good. I, I I saw somebody checked it in <laughs> yeah. on nitro, and I'm like, dang, now I'm, like, now, you know, I'm like, I'm like, right. Exciting. So yeah, what we should do is we'll chug this. Do, should we just minute. do nitro real quick? It. Should we do a side by side? Yeah, we should, oh, I don't know. Now, now we're gonna side by side. Okay, we're doing side by side. We're getting oh, weird, people. What's mm. what's been the biggest hurdle for you guys during this side by sides with no Ubers? No I can't Ubers. get home with all these side by sides. That's why we brought a DD. The, um, <laughs> but Banksy is like your most award winning beer, huh? I mean, I like, like no. you, it's not, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, like, I like feel like nothing's it, won more than one. <laughs> yeah. One Banksy, is enough, but I mean, more like is better. Like LA beer right. festival, I think, right? Like the, um, yeah. So actually I think you're right. I think it might be the most award winning. May it, um, may it be, let's, I don't know. It, let Mike's me get all the think facts back into the annals of our, of our, um, Banksy. You do that and I'll get us some, uh, some nitro. So, Excellent. 2016 gold at the California State Fair. Yep. That was our first award, and that was a big it was one Banksy for us. was your first, yeah. Yeah, so we were stoked. We we had loved this beer already, and, you know, ESBs aren't something you get a lot of in San Diego. Right. So, for it to win gold at California State Fair was was awesome. And then, uh, 2017, um, it won a bronze at the U.S. Um, Open beer competition. Okay. So, that's open to professional brewers as well as kind of smaller brewers, like home brewers and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but and then the homebrewers aren't like just, you know, slugs putting in beers that they poured into out of a can into a bottle. And let's hope not. Right? <laughs> Although there's man, there's some fantastic home brewing happening in this oh, town, but coming out of Quaff and it's got a great history. But yeah, what's, it's been yeah. that way forever, I think. Yeah. Um, 2018 bronze San Diego International Beer Fest and gold at L.A. And then 2019 silver at San Diego International Book Fest. So gold in LA. Yeah. Wow. Banksy, man. <laughs> just, yeah, it's just got such a stack of medals. You just can't even remember over there. Uh, He's got I had to read them off. It's phenomenal. I mean, it's, uh, I think it, <laughs> let's take a drink of it. It's, um, it's number one in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. It's, I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge ESB fan and couldn't ask for much more than this. I'll tell you. The beers are like my children and my, my dad was in the military. So they all disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> Until you drink three of them at a time, and we'll we'll find yes. out with them side by side. These two twins side by side. One's got a better hairdo than the other, I guess. I'm ready. I love, I love nitro. Always have. I mean, I I was a big fan of when they came out with the one one in the can, the stout. 
that you dumped like real hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that? Left so, hand. Left hand? Yeah, they're milk stout yeah. nitro. We're, nobody could figure out how modern, they got modern this nitro to a bunch seal of those as well. in that hard. bottle. Mm. And then you pop that top. I don't know what is this. You hear about bottle. it? Huh? Do you hear how they do it? No, I want to know. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's a it's, uh, liquid nitrogen drops. So when you do that, right, as as soon as you drop that in there, it, it, it expands exponentially. You cap it though. As soon as you drop it, you're done. So Mobile West will do that. We're gonna we're gonna look at doing some nitro some things. Nice. Yes. We're gonna do this pair wild on nitro, just kidding. <laughs> we're not can I yeah, can I just come over and watch it? I don't have to drink any, I'll just watch it. Uh you literally can because Mike normally posts this stuff on our Instagram. And you can sit right at the window and, and watch it happen. Perfect. You will watch it. <laughs> Let me that. know, Mike, because right. I want to see it happen. Deal. I mean, yeah, that, that sounds. That's the interesting part of beer that I like is that stuff that these little trade secrets that nobody tells about, and then somebody finds out about it, and boom, it spreads like wildfire. I mean, because everybody, have, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people have nitro now, hmm. whereas in bottles where they didn't have them before, that was a good. Yeah, that yeah, was a good one. Guinness Guinness did that too, right? In the, the cans, cartridges. The, the, the cartridges, the yeah, widget. The widget. A different. Yeah, the widget. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. And uh, people are going, "How do they do it? It's just like a draft." I think Banksy was the first thing we did nitro on. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And then we did. Then Holy the Void's been a pretty popular one that we've done on nitro. We probably did Ink Sock once or twice. Mm-hmm. But Banksy, I'm so happy to see it back on nitro. It's now, just, let me ask you a question. Now, I, I haven't got into detail on your your other beers i mean these these ones that you make that are you know kind of like my favorites i mean obviously new damage uh banksy these german lagers that you were popping out for oktoberfest i love them i could drink those all the time i haven't dwelled or delved into these other ones what should i go to next and try hmm it's a tough question man uh you know right now I don't, I personally, I'm drinking Vultures every day, Hammer of the Malts, which is our fest beer, yeah. mm-hmm. every day. Well, We're all good. The, <laughs> We're every day. I'm, dra- I'm drinking all of our beers every day, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, I just wh- want to know what you think. If, if somebody comes in here and goes, where do I start? You know, I'm, well, I'm really Belgian, into hot mod. Belgian that. season is coming up yeah. for us, so... You know, we kind of have this regular cadence where we've got Oktoberfest stuff kind of in the fall, and then we gear up for for the the cold winter months of San Diego um, with a with a full lineup of of Belgian beers. And so, I don't know if you've <laughs> experimented with any of the Belgians on the board. Uh, we've got a you know like a Belgian blonde single t- uh, Trappist ale. And then a double, a triple, and a quad. And I, I really thought that Githy to an Unry, our Trappist, was our most award-winning. I, um, I love that beer. That's probably my favorite on the. Well, it's not on. The, I don't know if it's on the board anymore. We just rebrewed it, so I'm very excited about that. And what we're doing, we're really for the, for those of you who are interested for the for the true beer nerds. We're because uh, that 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 is who we are. We are taking our time brewing this beer we're we're doing a nice decoction mash and we're really extending the brew day to make sure that we're drying this thing out as much as possible traditional ales are being being done in the traditional way and we could not be happier with the results so the the belgian line that's coming out in the next it should be out by next month we'll have everything out could not be happier with the way things are, are turning out for that. But Oktoberfest is pretty, pretty happy as well. What do you think? Nitro Banksy. Everything's better. It's, on it's, nitro. So, it's, it's unbelievable. So, <laughs> so smooth. It is so creamy, right? It's so yeah. No, it's, it's like, it's like Banksy Boddington's, right? It's <laughs> so smooth. Yeah. No, that's, so uh, that's unbelievable. Good call. And they challenge the side by side. Side by side. I mean, it's, it's amazing it's what itself. the difference is. They're both fantastic, right? And you can mm. kind of see where how the nitro changes the experience of you the keep talking, beer. Keep drinking. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so good. Mm. I mean, I, you get all the flavors here. This just 
it just puts like a coat of cream on top of everything. Right. Oh, so nice. Mm. That's, that is amazing. You should drink more, I think. No, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm a big quit fan drinking of that. that. I'll finish these right here <laughs> by myself. I do like a good Boddington's, though. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're returning that hen's teeth? Hen's teeth. Negative. No. Oh. Scottish beer. Hmm. Same No, I had the hen's teeth. No. Similar. Yeah. A lot of ESB style. Huh. But it's, ah, it's super good. If you get to Denver, you got to go to Hogshead. Hogshead. Place, man. Hogshead Brewing. Uh, it's right there in Denver. Mike and, and I have maxed out many a credit card there. They've got, it's all Cascales. Uh, yeah. Just all. You know, you know, they've got. You ask him anywhere we go, and there's a cast. I said, I'm getting that. I don't even care what's in it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Drop. All of their beers are just wow. amazing. They got Where's regular that? bitters, Downtown special Denver? bitters, extra special no, bitters. No, we don't. We literally miles. don't know because normally we're a few beers in before we order our beer. <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere so in the vicinity of Denver. That's all I we can find. Find it. <laughs> There's like a Bermuda Triangle around Denver. <laughs> we don't. We don't seek to understand it. We just we call an Uber, someone shows up, and then time disappears. Yeah. It's easier that way. <laughs> it's you crazy. Float right into anything there. Yeah, there's a lot of good places. There's pizza, there. beer. What about uh, you guys? Have you done any collabs? The hazy macabre was that it? With so um, what? What was it? What? Hayes Macab. Hayes Macab. Oh, there you go. That was yeah, with, actually, uh, with Black Flag. That was with Black Flag. I think we were there recently. <laughs> I, I just visited them yesterday. Um, well, it was funny. So, all right, we did this beer with with Black Flag called Hayes Macab, and it was it was an early foyer into the the hazy scheme of things for the beard, and it. it did really well. It tasted great. It was a it was a good way to get to know some friends in the industry. More importantly, I got my favorite beanie that from Jordan from Black Plague. So it was the yellow beanie. <laughs> it said Black Plague. Uh, he never took it off. I never I never did. And then summer happened. I took it off and <laughs> I could not find it. So on Thursday, I, Thursday I called Jordan from Black Plague. I'm like Jordan. You guys got those beanies? He's like, yeah, dude. I'll mail you one. I'm like, coming I got nothing going on Friday. I'm coming up. <laughs> I, I literally drove to Black Plague. And if you know where we are, it is not close. I drove very far to pick up a beanie. And uh, it was it was a great time. Hung out with the, the homies up there. Yes, we made Hayes McCobb with them. And it was, I believe it was their first Hazy as well. And, and if you go up there, if I'm quoting Eric, their head brewer, correctly – they have 19 IPAs on, and 10 of them are hazy, something like that. <laughs> but they're 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 really good people, Sounds and like uh, and maybe even a better brewery than they are people. I don't know. Uh, Jordan, though, man, the, you know what he's been doing during COVID. He's the owner of uh, Black Plague, he's been working out a lot. He's got some guns. I saw him yesterday. Ripped. He's he's ripped, dude. He's a professional skateboarder. If you guys he's stretching his t shirt yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yes. That's an easy. That's an easy transform from skateboarder to brewer, right? It's it's because you know why? Because half your job is falling off. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to be successful every time. Yes. You can break a few things and be okay, right? It, it is literally the best transition. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, we're on a skateboard subject. Who's dropped into a pool? A pool. Swimming pool. Empty swimming pool. Skated a pool. I haven't dropped into the pool. It's pretty steep. That's a pretty steep oh, drop. Oh, yeah. I, I dropped into. No, man. I, I've only broken you, a few fingers. Mike and I. I, I were you on this? Were you, were you on the skating circuit, Charlie, no, back in no, the day? No, no, no. That's Jeremy. That's Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah, but no, not me. But I did drop into a pool because all my buddies were skateboarders and stuff. No, come on. You can do it. You know, and you got you to gotta go up and hit the light. Yeah, be qualified. get over the light. <laughs> well, I hit the light and I came down and just whoop, the skateboard disappeared and I sprawled <laughs> on the bottom of the pool. Last time I did that, so. <laughs> 1972. We almost had to call this off because <laughs> right, of that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. I was still hurting. No, we almost had to call this off because I was dying from golfing. And... Mm. <laughs> Nitro Banksy. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm gonna give it a toss up because. 
the Banksy regular is absolutely great, but it does add a little super yeah, creamy. That was yeah. amazing. It that that's what it does. You're right. It adds the creaminess and it cuts the bitterness just a, just a hair. But that creaminess, it's it's such a pleasant surprise. So extra special bitter, right? Is what the ESB stands for. Yeah. And what what's so extra special? What is the extra special? I understand the bitter. <laughs> well, it's I don't know, man. It's all it's all in the name. Extra special bitter. It's it's what it is is all relative English style beers. They're up in the bitterness a little bit in this what is to them essentially just a pale ale and like I said it's all it's all relative it's just next level bitterness for the for their pale ale for us it would be barely a barely a pale ale bitterness but so if you tell uh you know any old Karen that walks in here asking for an amber ale um, it might scare her <laughs> off but <laughs> Is that what you tell nitro, her? It's like, hey, you better nitro, hit that. We don't have any awesome. amber ales here, know, sir. I tell her to get out. I don't know. Yeah, but if you gave her that that nitro, that would just take everything. It tastes it tastes like a mild ale because the anybody watch Borat last night? No, dude, I, I was so on my hit list. I uh, I didn't catch it. Did you oh, watch it? Oh, I did. Yeah. I uh, holy cow. Yeah, I it'll it'll definitely be on the hit list tonight. <laughs> oh. I wish you had, because we could talk about a few things, but I'm having my moon days. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So that, that, that final beer, new damage, hazy. Yeah, right. You can't, you can't um, drink beer in anywhere, I guess, today, these days, without a hazy IPA. Right. It's out of bounds. It's you know, ridiculously good. <laughs> we're, I, I, you know, I don't the, think the we're allowed to drink about, it. The thing about hazy is right we, in San Diego. We can't drink this beer. Why is that? We we came up with four. You already did four. Oh, we'll be all right. Whatever. No, come on. Hey. You got to follow the rules. Steve, <laughs> use the dials. <laughs> Let him go. <laughs> we um, So New Damage was it's like our first official hazy IPA. And we were the brewing ethos of the beard is to have fun, right? Do what we want to do. Ultimately, that's... That's what we're doing. We're not letting style guidelines, Scott Blair, Paul Segura, anybody tell us what to do. So we're, hey, let's make a hazy. <laughs> it was before, long before those fools made one. Um, we made this, and it was supposed to be a sort of a bridge between West Coast IPA and a, and a creamier mouthfeel more maybe aromatic expression leaning towards tropical. So what, what we've done though, it's, it's a, it's a bridge between the styles. So if you've had dreamer deceiver or brain box pollution that we do, those are maybe, I mean, this is the style so young, but I'm gonna say stylistically accurate, hazy IPAs. What I mean by that is maybe a sweeter finish mm-hmm. and less IBU. This, you still have enough of that IBU to balance out that finish, but there's a little bit of sweetness there. There's a little bit of residual sweetness, but you have some, right? You don't you don't find this hop in hazies, right? Simcoe, yeah. There's some Simcoe, Citra, and yeah, right. It's no surprise Citra's in there, <laughs> but you have that wrapped up with the appropriate amount of IBU, a little bit of a a little bit of a sweeter finish because it's not, there's so many, this oats, wheat, we have, we, we packed this thing full of all of that so that you get this like richer mouth experience and new damage. It's our new damage. It is phenomenal. It's, a, it, it's a salad. Um, Cheers. I'm a fan. Salad. I love it. Cheers. It's almost like lava sous model. <laughs> Yeah, I've been. Um, man, I think the the whole haze, like you know, a lot of a lot of people like they. Um, I mean, I think the whole haze craze type, mm-hmm. you know, they're like pushing it out. Man, um, I've been having you know hitting hitting some West Coast IPAs recently, right? Like just some, or I guess California IPAs, maybe more just the cleaner IPA, sure, which has been awesome, man. I mean, I think Pilsners and uh, 
and like a West Coast IPA. And this is closer, certainly, I think, closer to a West Coast IPA than most renditions of a hazy IPA in, in San Diego. I think like a, a good bridge. Mm. Like, you, like, I mean, I think compared to some things that you drink where you're like, gosh, I don't, I don't know if I can get on board with... Um, like the the whole tradition. I mean, I guess maybe it's it's like a crossover hazy. It's for sure. It's got a, it's got the hazy mouthfeel and the hazy. The funny, super bright, but it also you know is it's a way to lure the West Coast IPA yeah, drinker. Say, yeah, you get the first that ones free experience. Right. First ones <laughs> yeah. exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it, man. What, first what ones it's free, not man. here though. <laughs> I said the first ones free, but it's not free. <laughs> You'll have to come in and buy it. Uh, but like the I, I don't know. I call it the ur ur hazy. Which was Nelson from Alpine, the original Alpine. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Sean and Pat Mickelhenny, right? You have that was that was never a clear beer. Mm-hmm. Why not? Because you have it's hop haze. You got this polyphenols. It's they just brewed it. They just canned it. They just bottled it. They just kegged Super it yesterday. Fresh, yeah. So it's not clear. They don't biofine it. It's hazy as all get out. And if you have gang of one. So Gang of One's on the board. It's just Pilsner Malt and Galaxy. That's it. There's nothing else in it. We didn't buy it. Delicious, by the way. It was, yeah, it was awesome. kegged a week ago. It's as hazy as this. It'll drop out bright eventually because gravity wins, right? Yeah. It's like gra- in the brewing world, gravity is taxes and death, right? You can't escape it. Eventually, even this will clarify. But Gang of One is... It's a, it's a West Coast beer. There there are no oats. There's no wheat. We're not trying to heighten protein content so that we end up with this hazy yeast and suspension sort of experience. But it's if you look at it in your glass, it doesn't look much different than this. I challenge you to drink it next. We'll, we will drink it next. I don't challenge you. We're going to. Um, Sorry, Steve. I'm telling you. Um, so anyway... Yeah, that that though, that's that's the heady topper was trying to make Delson. Right. And the, right. you know, that's one of those things and it's if you go back to if if you're a student of the Burning Beard website and you go back to our uh I, I think there was a time where Mike and I were doing blogs and I made this comparison to Clash and U two. Clash U two was trying to be the Clash, but they were just they're who they were. Yeah. They brought Clash to their own personal experience, and they just couldn't be anything other than they were. And that's who Hetty Topper was. You couldn't, you can't just manufacture the Clash, right? Yeah. You can't uh, manufacture Nelson. You make something different, and then poof, you have Boy and War and Live at Red Rocks and Amazingness. And I'm speaking esoterically as I do. Um, Live at Red Rocks. I'm talking live, about the Grateful Dead again? I am. Or, I'm sorry. So you're saying you don't fish? like the class and you like you two? No, man. I'm saying they're different. Okay. And I, I drink them agree. both. Uh, I mean, if I had to pick one, if you're making me pick one, I'm picking the Clash and I'm picking Nelson. And that's it. Yeah. No, you know, Nelson. I'm, in, the I'm original. in on the Clash. Right? Right. London Calling. You, right. You don't, you don't pick you two over the Clash. I mean, people do. But if you do, I know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to say yes i'm gonna have to right. re-pour my taster man you're gonna gonna fetch that uh i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna fetch game of one all right and then i'm ducking out man Very i'm out of well. here i'm saying right. goodbye right now i'm all gonna right. leave you with mike Jim, moss i've talked so too much. much that was awesome thank I'm, you so i'm gonna much get game of one for all you all and he can talk about it on awesome. this one. that's right cheers friends cheers thanks so cheers. much jeff Now that is a good beer. New damage. <laughs> it's funny. It's the only beer we've had today that hasn't won a medal, but it's you also our top selling beer. You know what? Go figure. It, the <laughs> medal comes in greenbacks when you do that. That's right. <clears throat> guess what? There's there's something about that beer. I'm serious. I mean, when you guys came out with that, I was like, I'm I'm drinking a lot of this beer right now. <laughs> And quite often, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had a couple of sixtals of this in my backyard. Yeah. So compliments of you and uh, our friends, but uh, everybody that drinks it likes it. Seriously. 
It's it's magical almost. I mean, it's it's one of my favorites, that's for sure. Yeah, like we were saying, I think it's a good <clears throat> it's a good um, blending of the West Coast hop profile and bitterness, but also with the East Coast kind of mouthfeel and it's super you know, soft. Yeah, no, it's all that. That's awesome. And that's, that's like a great, uh, great description of it. You know, like how it's, you know, kind of the, the segue beer. Cause I think, um, I think I like it more, man. And I'm just like, I think a West Coast guy. Like yeah. I just love that. Um, I don't know, like the, uh, big fan of a West Coast IPA. Just, uh, yeah. Did, and there's, there is everything right with the West Coast IPA, right. man. And right? you get, like, you get that here. I it. mean, you get that, that bitterness that you don't get normally with the yeah, hazy you IPA. You know what? I, I drank so much of that West Coast IPA. I mean, I got to the point where I was like, if I taste another West Coast IPA, I'm going to puke, you know? Seriously, I drank a lot of it. And it was, I mean, there were great ones out there, guaranteed. But it was, this is, this is a softer, easier drinker. I mean, what is the IBUs on Thanks this? so much, Chef. Uh, one? No, both of them. This new damage and that. New damage is coming in around 50, Gang of One is coming in around 65, 70. Okay, I like it. Mm. Ah. Cheers. So this is one of the beers I have on in my personal draft system at home. What do you have, like 30 beers on draft? No, only two. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you own a brewery. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should upgrade. No, you have to be selective. I have twenty taps here. Yeah, well, I, I, know, I have twenty three taps sleep here. Sleep on the bar if you yeah, wanted. I could. It wouldn't be good. No. So do you guys? Um, do you guys change the? Is it always the same hop profile and malt profile, or is it just? No. So this is like it's a rotating. rotating. Beer. Okay. Yep. Wow. This. So. This right now it's Strata. Coming off of the new damage to this. That's interesting. If you look at them, they're though like to to Jeff's it's point, it's the same. Haze. It's the same. You know, they're uh, they're yep. pretty close orangier. to the same uh, turbidity, I guess. Huh? Is that the? Yep. Yeah, this one kind of rotates. You know, it kind of depends on what kind of grain we have available. That's good. And then we'll do kind of a, a hop variation depending on what we want to do. No, so that's neat. This is the first time some. we've done it with Galaxy, but we've done it with you know we've done it with Citra in the past. We've done it with some oh. of the kind of Southern Hemisphere hops. And, you know, it's not something we do all the time. We do it maybe a couple times a year, maybe once a year. Yeah. It's the first time we've done it this year. Um, but, yeah, when, when Gang of One comes out, it's always fun because it's smash. So right. So you kind of see, yeah. like, okay, what's what does this malt taste like and what does this what does this hop taste like? Right. And you can kind of understand, like, okay, well, I really like Galaxy Hops. This, yeah. This has right. a good character. Yeah, no, that's... I'll look for another beer with Galaxy in it next time. For sure. So it's a fun, it's a fun beer style to do because it's... You know, it's a one-off, and you're just kind of playing with it. And, and every time it's new. Every that's time great. it's new. Yeah, totally. I like that. Yeah, yeah so no, that's it's certainly, uh, that's really, really tasty. Mm. It's pretty amazing. So I, I, I want to thank you, you Mike, for uh, you and Jeff for, for allowing us in here to, to question uh, you guys on, on your brewery. And, and not so much question, but for you to enlighten us. Uh, and the provide, Grand Inquisition. Uh, uh, share some of your guys' beers with us. Um, Charlie, what do you got to add? Thank you, Mike. Thanks. I Cheers. Think, uh, yeah. Cheers. Thanks for having us yeah. on on the podcast. Super fun. And um, yeah, I really appreciate your support over the years and look forward to many more years of uh, Gang of One and beer drinking together. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, sure. Up the beard. Up the, up the beard. <laughs> and uh, you can you can join us at uh, uh, thepodcraft.com uh, for all links. We'll, we'll uh, show you pictures of the barrel room here as well as links to the burning beard, uh, links to the beers that we, uh, that we tasted today uh, as well. Uh, so look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed the second part of our burning beard on-site interview. Feedback is always appreciated, so please leave us a comment or a review if you have time. Thanks again to the whole Burning Beard crew for taking the time to share their story and some of their great beers with us. If you're in Southern California, then make sure you get out to Burning Beard in El Cajon, California. They have a lot of outside seating and some awesome food options if you'd like to consume beers on site. To subscribe to the podcast show, get links, see pictures, and to connect with the podcast via email, then head over to thepodcraft.com for all that info. 
Please also consider recommending the show to craft beer friends and family members in your life. This has been Tech Guy Steve for the PodCraft Beer Show. Have a great day. The PodCraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email the podcraft podcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.